Welcome to HurtTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be uh, cutting up some potatoes, uh, talking about some seeds that I am about to get started on, uh, some dahlias, um, some things you might be uh, purchasing now, uh, even if it's not time to put them in, just to make sure that you get a hold of them if you're interested in growing them. This season, about a week and a half ago, week ago, maybe just a week ago, uh, I put up a video uh, showing some of my cool season vegetables going in, and uh, they're up, uh, look great in the uh, on the light rack. And uh, we're gonna bounce over there now, and uh, I'll thin some of them out so you can see how I go about thinning them. So on the light rack inside the house, uh, these fluorescent tubes are directly over my trays, and you can see how close I actually have them. And I have them adjustable so I can raise this as they grow, but I keep the lights down quite close to them. Uh, that helps prevent some stretching. If I put the lights six, eight, 10 inches above, uh, they will definitely uh, stretch out more on me. This is a tray full of broccoli. These seeds were over a year old. And so I put a few more seeds in each cell than I normally uh, would. Usually I'll go for two or three. Some of these have four and more. And it's just, again, um, the, the seed's a little older. And so I typically go a little, little more. Uh, you'll be tempted when you thin these. Um, you, you could go in here and divide these out if you wanted to, um, if, if you wanted additional plants, more plants than you current, than you have. But for, for me, this is plenty. This is 50 broccoli plants. So I'll go through here and kind of select the, the most vigorous one and the other one I will cut out. Uh, I don't pull them uh, just because, you know, you could damage the one that you're keeping, but very quickly, you can, you can make very quick work of getting down to one plant and usually I'll, again, I'll just keep the most, uh, the most vigorous, the most vigorous one. One will have presented itself that's, you know, slightly superior to the others. And again, so there it is. I'll leave that. This has been about eight days. This tray is actually dry right now. Once they're at about this height, this is when I start fertilizing them. So again, these get watered by pouring water into the side of the solid tray at the bottom and a little bit of fish emulsion will start getting mixed in with that water now. One shelf below the broccoli, I've got some kale, uh, some bok choy, another kale, and some collards. I'm gonna go through here and thin these um, exactly the same way uh, that I did the broccoli and anything else that I have uh, on these shelves. We're probably a week and a half or so away from these being able to go into the garden. So you'll see a video when these go into the garden. And today I'm about to add a lot of my uh, summer um, and uh, fall flowering flowers and uh, some of my summer vegetables as well. So let's get started on that. Today I'm gonna add lots of things uh, to the shelves inside and I have four shelves, there's four lights. Uh, two sets of them are fluorescent uh, tubes and then two of them are LEDs and I like those fluorescents better. I actually like the heat from the fluorescents. I think that just adding that little bit of heat, um, you know, my house is heated and everything, but it is a little cooler in the winter and you know, than it would be uh, other times of the year in the house and so, um, I just like the, um, the fluorescents in general, obviously they burn a little bit more power, but um, I can't see any difference in my uh, light bill during typically February, March is when I'm running those lights. And then again in late August and September um, is when I'm, when, I, when I'm running those lights for my fall crops and my spring crops. Again, I'm using these 50 cell trays. You can just use open trays. You can do seeds however you wanna do them. You can do them in milk jugs outside. Um, however you want to do them. Um, I just find a lot of, I like the consistency of doing them in these uh, 50 cell trays with the solid, with the solid bottoms on them. Okay, so right now you can get seed potatoes. So I'm gonna be planting lots and lots of potatoes. I've got um, several different varieties. I do cut them up um, and I'll show you an example. Here's a uh, potato, uh, that is a, uh, got several eyes. Uh, here, here's one here, here's one here. Um, there's one back there. Um, I'm gonna actually divide this potato into three uh, potatoes. And then I put them on a window seal for a few days. And then I plant them. Some of my seed potatoes, uh, there'll be no logical place to cut them. And so I'll just put, I'll just use the whole potato. And you can just use the whole potato if you want to but I'm just trying to get more mileage uh, out of the uh, seed potatoes that I have. But I mean, this is literally just take a knife and cut it uh, so that one side, uh, that both of them have um, eyes on them. And then I'll put them in a window seal and I'll let this dry out. You know, when I cut them like this, 
there's a lot of moisture in them. I'll just let that moist edge dry out in a window seal for a few days, and then they're going in the going in the uh, the grow bags at that point, and I'll show you that when that happens. But again, uh, I just find a logical place to cut them where I'm leaving eyes on both pieces. Some I can cut into three, some of them I only cut into two, and some of them, uh, here's one right here that only has one logical eye on it, and you know it's just gonna stay whole. So uh, that's how I go about that. Cut the potatoes up, put them on a window seal, let the edges uh, kind of dry out and heal over uh, for 48 hours, and then they're gonna go in the uh, bags, and you'll see that when that happens. So that's my potatoes. Seed potatoes are available now, so that's, wh that's why I'm showing you that. Uh, other things that are available now, but it's too early to plant, are dahlias. And I have some, uh, you know, more of the dinner plate dahlias that I'll buy uh, each year. These, uh, I'm in zone seven, and sometimes they come back from the ground and sometimes they don't. I could have dug them, the ones that I had out here and kept them through the winter. I choose not to. Um, I, I'm buying three or four varieties a year and then the rest I'm doing from seed, so it's not, it's not overly expensive for me to replace but I will see some of the ones from last year come back and, some, and again, some won't. So that's dahlias. The other things that are available right now are tropical bulbs like elephant ears, but it's a little too early to be putting them out, but I would go and you can buy them and then store them in a, uh, uh, you know, a dark closet someplace until you're ready to, uh, to, to plant them later. Uh, other things that are available are um, strawberry plants, asparagus plants, bare root fruit trees and you know, a lot of things, a lot of bare root roses and just a lot of availability on things that can either be planted early or tropical things that you can acquire before other people do. Pick the best ones and then store them. Seed, um, I've talked through this several times about how my seeds are organized. My average last frost date is April 15th, uh, April 10th to April 15th, and it depends on depends on when you Google it, honestly. It'd be from April 10th to April 22nd, somewhere in there is our average last frost. You can look this up on Google. All you have to do is Google average last frost date for your zip code uh, or average last frost date for your county, and there'll be some information on there about when your average last frost date is. Then on the back of most seed packets, uh, like this, these zinnias that are from Johnny Seed, it will say, um, and zinnias can be done directly in the ground as well. You don't necessarily have to do them. All of these uh, by starting them inside. Some of them can just, some of them transplant, some of them you can just seed into the ground more easily than others, and zinnias would be uh, on that list. Uh, but I like, again, I like to do them from transplants because I get consistency from it. But if you, um, if you look on the back of this Johnny seed, it says culture, and then it says transplant, so four weeks before your average last frost date. So again, my average last frost date being April 15th to April 20th, whatever, um, I can just back up a month. And so this stack of seeds right here is all the four week things. These are things that I will not be seeding until after March 15th, which is you know, for approximately four weeks, a little more than four weeks before my average last frost date. And that's basil, zinnias, uh, cosmos, a lot of just easy to germinate things. They just won't, they, if I do them now, they're going to end up so stretched by the time they go in the ground uh, that, uh, especially zinnias, I just don't want my zinnias stretched. But uh, So there you go. There's my stack of things that are four weeks. Then I have a stack of things that are four to six weeks. Uh, and uh, this, have, this includes some giant marigolds that I grow, uh, a lot of my tomatoes, um, just, it's just too early for tomatoes for me. If I do them right now, they're going to end up super stretched. And I'm going to have to plant them super deep. Just easier. Uh, nasturtiums, asters, a bunch of things in this pile of seeds that are four to six weeks. And so I'm probably another two weeks before I start these. It'll be sometime in, uh, in early March. Uh, so I've got my mid-March, my early March. And then the next pile are things that are six to eight weeks and things that are just eight weeks or more. Uh, and these are the things that I want to put in today. Uh, that includes some uh, ageratum. This Blue Horizon ageratum, if you can get your hands on it, little teeny, teeny, tiny seeds makes a huge impact in your garden. Uh, great. Sometimes it's perennial, and some, and, but most of the time annual uh, for me. I've got some cat mint uh, that I'm doing from seed today. The summer jewels, pink and white salvia, which are just the best. Uh, if you've watched any of my tour videos last year, they are just the absolute best 
uh, annual salvia I've ever grown. Pollinators go crazy for them. The flowers honestly aren't quite as showy as some other salvias, but I love having pollinators in the garden, and so they've become my favorite. The um, I could only get the seed on pink, uh, and so I'll probably end up trying to find some white ones as you know, just purchase purchasing them. But it's time for those to be planted. My mahogany splendor hibiscus. If you follow the channel at all, that beautiful purple um, hibiscus that I grow every summer. Um, I've got seeds for it, and there, it's time for those to go in. Uh, Angelonia. Uh, Angelonia is a, uh, this is a pelleted uh, seed. It's actually wrapped in a, uh, um, it, it's pelletized. Those seeds go on top of the soil. I mentioned that in the video uh, a week ago. Uh, and then uh, there are some asters that go in early. I've got several varieties of milkweed. Uh, uh, let's see, what else is going in today? Uh, my dahlias, my seedling dahlias, uh, I'll start today. Uh, dahlias are easy from seed. Most of these seedling dahlias are singles, whereas some of the ones I purchased are big giant doubles, and the, and the pollinators have a really hard time with these. They, they can't, they're, they're beautiful to us, but they're very difficult for the pollinators to actually get in. Um, so I make up for that by doing my uh, dahlia seedlings, which are, all, like I said, almost all the flower parts are exposed and the bees will literally sleep on those uh, overnight. Some gomfrina, several rudbeckias. I do a few um, rudbeckias, which are typically perennial, but I do some zone eight rudbeckias, um, and I'm in zone seven B, and they're not completely reliable coming back, like prairie sun uh, that uh, I do every year from seed, and uh, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful rudbeckia every summer. Again, some will come back and some won't. And then peppers. Peppers are typically uh, eight weeks um, on your on your peppers. And I've got um, hot peppers, bell peppers, uh, several several different ones that I do every year. Jalapenos. I do lots of jalapenos because I like to pickle jalapenos. But that's the seeds uh, that I'm doing um, right now. Are just again the ones that are six weeks or more, uh, six to ten weeks basically uh, that they take to become a transplantable size directly out into the garden. I don't want to do any of these things uh, that are going to stretch out. Plus, I only have four, I have four shelves in there. By the time, so I'll do these today on the two lights that I haven't been using. Um, and again, the number, you know, I don't need more than 10 of one of these peppers, you know, of an individual pepper. So I'll just do two rows in one of these trays. I don't need, um, I will do all of the hibiscus. The, the entire packet of seed because I line this whole back fence back here with them. But most of these things, I'm only gonna do five plants or 10 plants um, and, and they'll have a big impact. Uh, they'll have a big impact in the garden. By the time I'm at my next round of seeding, the ones that you saw me thinning inside the broccoli and the cool season vegetables will already be planted in the garden and I'll have those two lights available for my next rounds of seeds. And so that's also why I'm splitting the timing beyond the fact that it's the, it's the correct way to do it. Uh, uh, I'm also thinking about, I only have a limited amount of space uh, to plant these things. And what would happen if I did my tomatoes today is that by, I say my average last frost date is April 15th, but I might see a frost in the forecast you know, out on April 20th, April 22nd, and I definitely wouldn't put my tomatoes out. So if I did them today, I might be as much as 10 weeks, and I know that my tomatoes at some point in this little tray, this close together, competing with one another, are gonna be this tall. And I've done that before, I've made this mistake before, so it's not like I'm telling you something I haven't done myself. Uh, I, will pro I would need to transplant them into larger pots to prevent that from happening, to give them a little more space, and I definitely, do not have room to plant all of these little individual plants into larger containers before they go in the ground. My entire house would be covered in them. So again, another good, another reason beyond just the ease of it, uh, uh, you know, on the, on the timing. Uh, I don't want to transplant them twice. I don't want to plant them in there and then plant them into a pot and then plant them into the ground. So there you go. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel to follow along. Uh, you'll see potatoes going in the ground. You'll see my cool season vegetables going in the ground. And you'll see all my uh, four to six week seeds going in uh, here in the next uh, 10 to 14 days, something like that. Thanks for following on.